All right, what's up everybody? This is Jesse from BCC Border Pairs. Today we have an iPhone 8 Plus that has a Wi-Fi uh, button that's grayed out, as you can see here. I'm gonna go through the process on uh, how to fix it and you know, doing the whole reballing, uh, running jumpers. I am gonna use these new Refox soldering lugs. These came from Rewa. Uh, so we're gonna see how, how to use them, how to install them and all that. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with the repair. Um, what I'm gonna do here is change to this camera and kind of walk you guys through first the symptoms. We do have to, um, you know, first test everything to make sure um, you know, that the issue is actually present. Uh, if you saw my last video, I did just go and start repairing a device that was actually, came in for no backlight, but turns out it had other issues. So it's always important to pre-test. I usually do, but that one time kind of just jumped into it and wasted a lot of time. But here is uh, Wi-Fi in the settings. You can see you cannot turn it on. We go back over here, uh, Bluetooth does work. Now keep in mind, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are on the same chip. So um, sometimes they both won't work. Sometimes one or the other doesn't work. So you can see here, it turns on and off. So Bluetooth is working, just not Wi-Fi. Now everything else works, it charges. Uh, so I plug in the charger. You can see on the upper left, uh, we have charging. Now the battery is 100% full, so it's not gonna do any real charging right now. So I see uh, some people have joined here in the chat. Uh, I see e -DJ Com, Bandy Cell Phones, and Daniel. Uh, Lapin have joined. Hey guys, thanks for joining the stream. Uh, make sure you you like you smash that like button here. Um, hey, why is there a SoCal Digital <laughs> logo in the bottom? All right, so um, so yeah, so this is uh, Wi-Fi grayed out. You can also see here in the control center, the button is grayed out. So another indicator that Wi-Fi is not working. Now, one of the interesting things about uh, this repair is that I did go through the disassembly process. Let me show you guys real quick. Of course, it's kind of stuck right now. There it goes. So I'm gonna I did have to screw in all the screws here from the frame just to get it to have a grayed out Wi-Fi. Once I removed all the screws, um, the Wi-Fi started working. So that's a huge indicator that the issue is not the chip, but uh, a trace because the when the board is soldered, I mean, screwed in, is applying pressure to applying stress to the board, you know, slightly bending it, uh, you know, stuff like that. So let me unscrew all this and then we'll boot it back up just to, sh just to see what happens. And I think that was all the screws. So I had this screw, this screw, this screw, and this screw all in. Wi-Fi chip is right here. So if you can imagine these screws are pushing down and kind of flexing the board. Um, so, so here, let me show you. I've removed all the screws. I am plugging in the screen. And just plug everything in. All right, and I always like to boot up a phone using the charging cable. Um, I plug it in. All right, turning on. Yeah, so by the way, um, those of you guys here on the live stream, can you see the SoCal Digital Repair logo on the bottom right? I don't know why it's there. All right, let's see. Look at that. You see Wi-Fi is working. So that's that's a huge clue to the issue being um, not the chip itself being has failed, but the traces underneath. 
So when the screws are in, it applies pressure and it disconnects those traces. So let's go ahead and get started with the actual repair. All right, uh, let me see. So weird, I don't know why that's, my old logo is there. All right, so I'm just I'm plugging all the flex cables. I could get the board out. We're gonna switch over to so physically here. Oh, that's weird. Some water damage here on this cap. All right, so physically. There's no uh, visual cracks or anything. The board doesn't look bent. Let's see, uh, the housing doesn't look beat up either, but uh, most likely the Wi-Fi is screwed. So I hate these stickers. So what I'm gonna do first is put this on my preheater. I'm going to peel off these stickers because they, they will melt and then get in my way when I'm trying to uh, connect the screen and stuff. So using some isopropyl alcohol. By the way, uh, you guys probably heard me complaining about my audio issues. I did just order a external audio controller thing that should uh, hopefully improve the audio quality. So we'll see, I'll have to experiment. I don't know too much about this kind of stuff, so I'm just gonna be buying stuff and returning the stuff that doesn't work. So I got these off. All right, so first, first thing I like to do is just cut off this part of the sticker. Uh, I don't know why Apple decided to add this on the 8 series. All right, then we gotta remove the underfill. So what I do is I'll use, I'll use like 250, 250 Celsius with um, 65 air, it's a little too high, and essentially I want to pick off the black stuff that I, hold on, the board is kind of moving. So using my blade here, I'm going to pick off I'll pick off this black stuff here. This is called underfill, it's like a rubbery glue kind of stuff. Um, you got to clean it out so you can pull the chip without being held down by anything else. This makes things a little easier. So the preheater is warming up the board. The hot air from the top is directly hitting that spot. So all together makes it uh, a lot easier to get this off. 
But wait, I'm going to try to make this stream uh, short. In other words, it's going to try to just go fast. I feel like all my live streams are super long, so I don't know. So this back part here is the, the toughest part. So this is a lot of it. Um, also, when you're doing this, you want to be careful. You don't want to scratch the board at the bottom, the surface area, basically. All right, so then here, just kind of scrape this off. Yeah, I'm using uh, the quick hot, quick hot air station. Uh, uses Celsius for the temperature setting. I'm just kind of. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about the cap yet. I'll just leave it as is for now. You want to be gentle when doing this. You don't want to scratch the board, like I said. Uh, there are some traces that go from like these components, or different parts of the board. And if you're too rough, you could sever the connections and then you have to run jumpers for that as well. So... So here's an IC here, you want to be careful, just, just put in just enough to kind of clear it out, but don't be too rough. Now here's the tricky part, there's a lot of components here as well. So you just come in at a very high angle with your tool, and um, just gently pick it off. It doesn't have to be all in one you no know, one spell sweep soup can just kind of little by little until you clear out that little area. Very tedious work here. I see there's 13 people on the stream. There's only six likes, so let's get that like button uh, smashed. If you're watching. All right, so just this is, this is probably the toughest part here when doing this underfill, just because there's very little space. You also don't want to damage these components, so... And then my, I forgot to mention, my preheater is set to 120 Celsius. I'll just kind of... go through and... Pay real close attention to what you're doing. Uh, don't can't stress this enough. Do not dig in too deep, or you will damage the board. All right, so now I'm going to switch to my hook. Uh, this, this I use this usually at the very end to kind of clear out any thing at the end. Um, I feel like the knife does better for the initial picking. And then, um, but yeah, I think that this should be good. So, I 
All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to remove the chip. I do that with 400 uh, Celsius and 100 air. I basically just blast it. Uh, this has a lot of ground planes, so you got to be uh, a lot more heat to get it off. And I like to go in here in the upper right just to, there's a lot of ground pads here, so it doesn't matter if I damage anything here. You see my tool. There's a bent crane. All right, there it is. Popped right off. I actually landed right on my tool. All right, so let's take a look at the actual root cause of this issue. Which is going to be uh, one of these four, not one, but multiple. At least one of these traces is what I'm trying to get at. So there's four. You can kind of see them here. Um, there's one, two, and three, four. So here on the sides, they go from just here on the outside into each one of these pads. And what happens is after a hard drop or a bend or whatever, the, the connection here breaks. So let me clean up this whole underfill stuff first. Uh, what I like to do, by the way, this Wi-Fi chip is paired to the board right now, so I'm going to reuse it. I'm going to put it off here to the side, and I'll come back to it. Um, so, back to clean underfill. I'll go back down to 50 and 65 air. And what I like to do is just kind of use my tweezers here to have, don't have a sharp tip, kind of just scrape away this uh, big chunks of underfill stuff. And then I'll come back and use my soldering iron to kind of clean up the rest. I like to use my tweezers just because they are um, they're not sharp, so they don't scratch the board. Um, let's go around. So larger areas, um, the underfill comes off, comes just right off. I like to do this first just because it just comes off easier as like big chunks. I try to do it after I run my iron and just like uh, like the texture changes and it's a little a little more different to take it off. So I don't know. That's how I got used to doing it. So, I like to clear off also this, these big pieces here, like around the edges, just because sometimes when you're putting the chip back, um, stuff gets in the way and it won't sit, it won't align perfectly in it. Kind of ruins you, so um, try to get these pieces out. Pieces out. All right, so I just clean up around here the edges. All right, this should be good. I'll do the rest of my soldering iron. I'm gonna use some flux. And then I'm gonna run my iron 
add some solder, and then uh, I'm just run over each pad with my iron. I'm essentially uh, prepping the pads. Because the factory solder does use like a higher temperature, uh, non-leaded solder. Which uh, apparently sucks for soldering, but it's good for the environment, supposedly. So, I had to put some uh, leaded solder back on the board. Alright, so, got all the cut up all done. Now I'm going to wick the rest of the board. I like to wick the board just because, um, for whatever reason, the Wi-Fi chip uh, sits better once you reball the chip and place it back. So just kind of the wick. Um, the wick just sucks right up off the board. And then some alcohol and a toothbrush. And I clean up this mess. We get a Q-tip. Yeah, it's Sunday, 4.35 p.m. here. Um, you know, this, this is what I spend my Sunday doing usually, soldering, trying to clear out my queue. The good good time to solder just because mostly everybody else is not working, so no one bothering me, asking me for quotes and stuff. So I could uh, really focus on getting stuff fixed. All right, uh, there's this pad here that looks oxidized, so I'm just going to scratch it a little. If a pad is oxidized, uh, it's essentially a layer of gunk on top of it, and it won't let the, the solder, like, combine from, you know, from the chip to the board. So it's always good, uh, good practice to clean that off. All right. Uh, oh, here it is. I'm going to wipe it down a little more. And look at that. There's a filter that came off. So we'll need to replace that. I actually just had a repair two, three days ago. Where I had no rear, uh, near, no rear camera and it was just from this filter. It had disconnected. So definitely, uh, Something is required here. I'm going to prep these pads real quick. All right. Save that for later. All right, so the, the main issue here is going to be uh, these pad, these four pads here. One, two, three, four. This middle one is the ground. It doesn't matter. So watch. As soon as I poke this, one of these will break. Or it should break. Oh, that's seems good. Oh, here it is. So this pad just breaks off. So when you have, you know, these screws, for example, this screw here, this screw here, screwed in, you're applying pressure here on the board, like it's bending at the board and disconnects this pad. There it goes and broke off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expose this trace here and then we're going to run a jumper. I'm going to scrape that off. So I like to use my blade here to expose this trace. So essentially this pad connects to this trace. 
it this way. So we're going to recreate that connection. There it goes. Now I'm going to use, um, so I just got these. They're the Reflox soldering lugs. They're essentially pre-made jumpers. These are uh, made by Rewa. If you guys know Rewa, it's that, uh, they have a YouTube channel where they post a lot of uh, repair stuff. So essentially, yeah, just a bunch of jumpers. So there's one for uh, Wi-Fi, I see. All right, so they're mimic the same uh, shape as the Wi-Fi I see here. Oops, melting, melting that. So let's go ahead and use this to fix this trace here. So the way you use it is kind of, let me see. Do like this. Poke through and all right. So there you go. I picked it off. And actually, I don't like to run jumpers here on a preheater. So let me get it off the preheater. All right, we're out the preheater. And then bring this over here. So you can see the, the shape is very similar to the factory pad. So that's kind of the goal here is to solder this pad into position. It's very, uh, very, it's like a little piece of wire, so very flimsy. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to add some flux here. I always use flux when soldering, so it helps promote uh, the, the fusion, I guess, from the two, two sides. All right, there you go. And add some more solder here. Add some to the tip of my iron. All right, he's moving. All right, I'm gonna to try to solder this side too. Uh, that looks pretty good, I think. Now that this is soldered on, I'm going to cut off the rest here. We don't want that touching the ground plane. All right. All right, so let me uh, clean this up and take a look. All right, you guys see that? So now we have uh, this part of the trace connecting back. It's gonna basically uh, be placed right under the chip. So when you place a chip on top, it's gonna solder to that, uh, to the lug, soldering lug, and then it's gonna connect to the little trace here that exposed. Um, so, that's how you would basically use it here. Now, I don't know what, usually is this trace that breaks, but just for a good practice or good uh, measure, I'm gonna do the rest of the traces here just because um, they all could, well, I'm debating, I kind of did damage this one too. I'm gonna just, might as well do them all real quick. 
And this crotch this out. Essentially the weak point is from where the rectangle goes to the little trace, the little spot right here breaks. So the goal is to kind of bypass that. You know what, let me scratch them all first and then I'll run the jumpers. Also, you see here how I kind of scratched the, uh, across the, the line. So this will also help make sure that I don't, uh, I didn't damage anything. Or if I did damage it, it won't affect it because I basically bypassed that part. And just expose the little circles. By the way, if, um, if you look here on ZXW, you'll see uh, the traces I'm talking about. So if you go, you guys can see here the four. So basically, I'm jumping from the circle to the rectangle. So this is where we're fixing, like the little section here is where it breaks. So let me go back. All right. So let me tin, tin these pads. Add some flux. Add some solder. All right, cool. Let me get some more of these. I don't know, I think the word lugs, soldering lug is weird, <laughs> but whatever. So I like to pick it off from this bottom side just because if I damage this end, I know I'm not gonna use this end, so it's fine. I don't wanna damage the, this uh, flat part. All right, so pick this off. Let me lay it down like that. Now, you don't need these solder lines to do this. You can use jumper wire as well. So this, uh, this does have an advantage to a jumper because it's kind of the shape of the pad. So you have a lot more surface area to solder onto when the chip does go on here. So, all right, so I'm going to add some solder to my uh, iron tip so that it has something to solder with. All right, so my hand's a little shaky right now. All right. Um, All right, there it goes. So I think these soldering lugs are pretty cool just because they're pre-made to the specific jobs. Uh, like I mentioned, sometimes the jumper wire itself does not have enough solder uh, surface area, so to speak. So it does kind of help ensure the, you know, the connections do happen. And I think this is, only, this is not too expensive anyway, so one repair should, should cover the cost of all this. All right, so just, uh, by the way, after all this, we're going to use some UV mask, mask to make sure it stays in place. And then I'll, if you guys want, I'll put a link in the description, buy these, on where to buy these. I don't have that yet. I'll probably have it within the next day or two. All right, 
So has anyone in the comments uh, used any of these? Anyone in the live stream, I mean? If so, what'd you think? Did you find them useful? Oh, I'm not on yet. So I'm going to add a little more solder. There you go. So you kind of visually can tell when it makes contact just because of the texture or like the shape of the, the connection. All right, so on almost at my last one, let me add some more solder here. I think that will help. There's like a little bigger bubble of solder here. I think it'll grab easier. I seem to get it. I think that should work. Fifteen viewers. So if you're watching the live stream, let me know in the chat. Let me know where you're watching from. And um, and do you offer micro soldering? Do you micro solder yourself, or do you uh, just do repairs, or are you just uh, a spectator, not even in the repair world? I'd be curious how many watching are actual repair shops versus just someone curious. All right, so I've tacked on that jumper up down there. Okay, I'm gonna add some more solder. All right. Uh, I'm going to the tweezers are dirty. I'm going to push this down. There you go. I'm going to hit this one with a little more solder. There you go. These all look good. Cool. So now we have four solid traces here that will hopefully not create any warranty issues. All right, so now I'm going to clean this up. All right, so check it out. So this is what it looks like and result. Now, just for a good measure, I am going to this diode mode to check, make sure there's no short to ground here. I'm going to put my red probe on ground. And then my black probe, I will check each pad. Uh-oh, look at that. This, this has... These two are shorted, I think. Let me check. Where, what readings should these be? So if we go to ZXW. All right, we should get, we're supposed to get 0 0.064. If I measure it. So red on ground. 0 0.097. Okay, so it's not shorted. It just has a really low reading. I think we're good. So these two bottom ones are OL. These two top ones are just a really low reading. If it was shorted, you would get something like this. 0 0.000 or like 001. Also, let me check that cap. It's right here. This cap is VDD main. 
here this is the one that looks water damaged uh this and this is the filter that's missing which i will need to replace it's a 10 10 ohm filter uh let me just double check so this cap did not read as short But this v BDD main, so I might just take this cap off. I need a, some heat here. All right, so I'm gonna take out this cap and then install the missing filter with the UV mask. Uh, let me try some heat here, clear out the smear fill. So since this cap is on uh, VDD main, there's like a million more caps. So the, fu the form will function fine without just this one uh, being gone. All right, that should be fine. Oh, I forgot to change the camera. All right, so I got that cap off. Then I'll need an 8 plus donor board. Oh man, what, what happened here? Uh, a filter's there, so let's use this. We've been 41 minutes. Oh, oh wow. Longer than expected. So, since I'm trying to harvest this uh, filter, I do need to be careful here. I don't want to. I don't want to lose the filter. I just, I guess I should mount this properly. It keeps moving around and pressing me up. The way I do have it at 250. By the way, my, my uh, hot air station started making a weird noise on certain uh, air flows, so. I don't know if it's going to fail sometime soon. <laughs> Luckily, I do have a backup ready, just in case. Our filter looks a little funny, too. So I'll pull, I'll pull this filter and see if... Um, and I'll have to test it and make sure the measure is good. Alright, so let's see if I can just pull it off with my iron. Yeah, I'm going to go. Um, where are my tweezers? I don't have any flux here. So the little filter here is on my iron. I placed it. I think I should be good. Let's do some measuring here. So filter should have continuity from one end to the other. I have diode mode reading of 282. Should get exact same reading on the other side. 282. 
So this is installed right, filter is good, and we could assume. So, uh, so after this, we'll test the camera just to be sure. Let me clean up all this flux here. All right, so here's um, what we're going to do is some UV mask. So UV mask is, I'll have this tube here of mechanic green UV. I like to keep it in a little towel. I use uh, a tool to kind of push up a little blob. A little bubble here at the end, and then I'll just barely tap. Oh, it's hard to see. I'll get like a little, little bit of UV on my blade here. Can you guys see it? So I have a little bubble here of UV on my blade, and then I'll, oops, wrong way. And I use my tweezer as the applicator. So I'm gonna put I like to put very little thin layers where I'm working. If I get too much, and then I all I do is just kind of spread it out so it's like so it lays flat. You don't want like uh, bumps, like uh, little like kind of bumps. You want it flat. So use less is more, uh, you know, how some people say. So just apply uh, it. Remember, you can always do multiple coats. So if you put some and it looks too thin, you get uh, UV, hit it with the UV light, let it cure it, and then just add another layer on top. Um, let me add some hair along the sides. The reason why you don't want any kind of uh, any kind of bump is it will get in the in the way of the chip sitting flat. Remember, there's very little tolerance. Um, like it has to sit even. If it's lopsided by, by a little bit, um, it can like not sit flat, and some pads don't make contact, etc. All right. Um, for cameras, I don't know what that's about. Uh, no, I'm not going to use purple mode because I am reusing the same uh, Wi-Fi chip. The chip is not the problem here. All right, so now I hit it with the UV lights. Now don't look at it with your um, with your eyes directly. You can't look at it through a camera because the camera the screen does not produce any UV lights to hurt your eyes. So, that should be enough. All right, so this pad here has a little too much UV on it. So, let me scratch that out. All right, so that yeah, should be good. So the board is good. Um, now we gotta reball the Wi-Fi chip and then put it back. Like I said, this is the same one. The chip is not the problem. It is the traces I just fixed, so no need to replace it. Now, if you do replace it, I do have to unpair. Uh, tell the NAND that you're no longer paired to this Wi-Fi chip. Uh, that process is called unbinding or unlocking. I don't know, I really see a lot of different wording for it, but I like to call it unlocking. Um, the unlocking happens at the NANDs, not at the Wi Fi chip. So there's no programming the Wi Fi chip. We program the NANDs to tell it, okay, you don't, 
don't look for a specific Wi-Fi chip. Any Wi-Fi chip, uh, you should work with any Wi-Fi chip from now on. So first I will prep the pads. Now I'll need some soldering wick. I do use the giant roll. I burned through so much wick. I just got the giant roll here. So what I'll do is just cut a big piece. Oops. All right, so I have this uh, long strip with my inverted ceramic tweezers. And then I'm going to wick the chip flat because I'm going to reball it. Uh, so just kind of just maneuver it around. This thing moving around, I might have to. Sometimes it's easier when you do it on a, on a paper towel. We add some grip, so let me do that. And too much flux on the on there. All right. Same thing, just kind of. Too much uh, solder absorbed onto the wick, so I'm not sucking that off. So I'm going to clip off and have a fresh piece of wick here. And it's the job. You can see now that I'm on, here on the clean cloth or paper towel, the chip doesn't move as much, so it's a lot easier to. Um, wick. Now I'm going to clean off the chip. Now we got to reball it. You see the all the pads are flat. All right, so I'll need an A. There's an A plus. is A11. I have an A12 stencil and an A11 stencil. Yeah, so I have this uh, stencil. I forget who makes it. So if you just search uh, 3D A11 stencil, you'll be able to find it. If you guys uh, want a direct link, let me know in the chat and I'll find it for you guys. Oh, wait. Forgot to switch cameras. All right, so this is the sensor. This uh, ho help hold the chip in place, although it's not perfect. So you do got to make sure not doesn't move around. All right, so just apply some soldering paste. Goal here is to fill in every single square, rectangle, every cavity or slot. I don't know what you want to call it. All right, so let's do that. Let's scrape off the top layer so that you only leave some in the in the slots here. A big blob of solder paste there. All right, then hold it down. Oh, and then back at 330 Celsius with uh, 35 air. Now it's going in circles. And yes, uh, I do have multiple cameras here for the live streams. Right, so I'm just basically going in circles, basically warming up the stencil warming up the paste and everything. Uh, this helps prevent any kind of warping as well. All right, here it goes. You can see on the bottom, bottom corner, it is now forming the solder pads, solder balls. All right, so uh, visually I can tell that all of them are formed, they all look uniform. I can now remove the heats. I can now gently remove the pressure from my tweezers. 
and now poke the chip out. So right now while it's still warm, uh, the best time to clean it. So you do that first. So a nice purple alcohol and a toothbrush. Also here as well. That way it's clean and ready to go for my next next repair. I don't have to deal with old uh, old flux. Alright, so now the chip itself. I am going to clean it a little. Get rid of that old uh, old flux. I'm going to heat it just a little bit to evaporate the alcohol here. And you can see the pads aren't... It looks like a little weird. So just to make it uniform again, I'm going to add some flux. So I'm going to spread this flux here on the chip first, otherwise it doesn't get on every pad. When I do heat it. Oh, that should be good. Then what I do here is actually I hold, I suspend the chip in the air so that it gets hot really fast. If I have it on the, on the mat, on the work mat, it will, the heat gets transferred to the work mat and now I have a lot more thermal mass to deal with. So what I'm doing here is reflowing the solder basically. It helps uh, get like the perfect shape on the chip. So if you watch closely, you can see them all forming and filling in the space for the each solder pad, basically. Uh, it's kind of hard to do this and keep the camera in focus. So I'm going to have to clean it again. Now, who, who here in the live stream uh, is able to do these Wi-Fi repairs? And who here is still learning? Curious. Curious to see the ratio on this. All right, take a look at that. So you kind of see, it's kind of hard to see the, the solder rectangles, I guess. Yeah, this is a uh, rebald. Oh, this is the donor board. Let me get this out of here. And get the customer board. Okay. Let me take a quick picture for social media. All right. Let's see, uh, where you been? Didn't see you upload for a while. Uh, I just uploaded a video yesterday. And before that, I just been busy with work. So 
haven't had time to stream. I haven't done any Facebook streams in a while. This is because I find uh, Facebook is good for when I'm live at that moment. But after that, there's like literally no, no activity on the videos. So on YouTube, I, I see a lot more activity over time. I can see the views constantly are growing. Uh, whereas Facebook, it kind of just disappears. Um, of course, I see uh, Jamil is watching uh, with his daughter. So, uh, Polo is working on a 7 Wi Fi. Yeah, if you replace a chip, you do have to uh, unbind um, or unlock the Wi-Fi through the NAND, and you can do that using the purple mode. I do have a video on that as well. Check uh, check my video history. I did on a 6S Plus, I think. All right, cool. So I'm gonna uh, install this using very low heat first. Um, I'm using 330 Celsius, basically my reballing heat, 330, 35. Let me see how. So I'm going to see if this is enough heat to solder it on. If not, then I'll turn it up a little bit more. Oh, look, I can see it has made some movement. So I'm going to bump it just to see if it uh, if it's actually soldered on. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, the thing is soldered on. So that was enough heat to get it on. All right, so now I gotta wait a little bit, let it cool down. I don't wanna disturb the board while it's still hot. The solder is still kind of liquid. Um, so let's give it a few more seconds. Okay, take it off gently. Now the board is making contact with my work mat, which is providing some sort of Heat transfer um, helps pull it off. There should be enough time. Now I should be able to drop some ISO and then kind of clean it off. Also, just for good measure, I'm going to look under the sticker just to see if there's any large blobs of flux that kind of snuck in. Uh, I do see a lot of flux here, so let me in this area too. Don't I don't want lots of flux um and building up. Oh you guys can't see it. I like to leave the area as clean as possible. Why is this chip black? Well, should be good enough. All right, guys. So here's the moment of truth. We are going to install it and see if this works. It's a little sticky. Let me clean it. All right, let's see, let's read some comments while I'm installing this. Um, still see eight plus and below with Wi-Fi chip issues. Customers don't always want to pay. Yeah, I think um, I see a lot. I still get, um, you know, iPhone six success 
people willing to pay you know full price for the repair and i think a lot of it does have to do with your sales pitch on the repair you're, you're you know pointing them on um you know if you just say like yeah it's not worth it but we can do it if you want then you're already giving them the feeling like well they don't think it's worth it but if you uh do a better like pitch like like oh you know we could definitely fix that for you uh it is you know back with the lifetime warranty you don't lose any of your data you keep using your phone as is but you know everything will be functional again uh like new etc and it's only you know 100 150 dollars whatever price you put them then they're more willing to uh pay keep in mind um you know if a phone has an issue right they have two options the well i guess technically three one they keep using it as is with the issue present two they buy a new phone or three they fix it uh part of getting a new phone where they have to transfer all the data have to log into everything again you know all that stuff even i hate it so be able to you know give them the right pitch on why they should repair it then um you know maybe you'll get the sale um yeah you don't need a fixed wi-fi to get data and in some cases like in this case why the phone is fully functional just wi-fi is straight out so look at that so wi-fi is working i i did put those same screws back in uh you can actually see it's picking up um wi-fi as well let's just double check bluetooth it's actually picking up a bluetooth device as well so there you have it phone is fixed uh oh yeah let's check the camera there they go um one x two x works selfie camera works so remember we did fix that filter so there you have it so um so yeah, here, let me show you guys real quick again. This is the reflux soldering lug things. It comes in a little app like this. I'll post the link in my description eventually. I just don't have it right now. I'm sure if you search the Rewa, Rewa store, you'll find it. These are it. There's different connections. There's like the Wi-Fi, the small pad with the with the wire big pad with the wire and then these are good for sandwiches so like if you have a sandwich board with rip pads you can use some of these circles to um solder it on but uh but yeah the video is done we did it at one hour and eight minutes so thanks everyone for watching make sure you check out uh the links in the description i do have links to merch i do plan on making more designs but currently i just have my logo as a design you can get a t-shirt hoodie or a coffee mug uh also if you're interested in any of the tools i have here like um you know microscope solder and iron hot air station you know etc i do have those links in my uh website the vcc board repairs.com slash year it's also in the description uh let's see what else do i have there um if you need any board repairs uh just go to my website vcc board repairs.com go to contact us and uh, send me a message. I'll get you. Um, I'll send you over a quote. Uh, and if you're looking to learn micro soldering, um, we do have a course. I am the lead solder coach of the Pro Fixer 90 Day Program. So if you're interested in that, also a link in the description. Uh, but besides that, I think that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I probably will live stream again. You know, in the next few days. So keep keep that in mind. If you enjoyed the video smash that like button subscribe to the channel and uh yeah i think that's all so all right bye guys